who would like to use us. That's what we do. Why do we exist? That's more important. As a company, we exist to level the playing field between independent advisors and bankers. So when we talk about technology, what we actually do as an organization is not about selling softwares, is not about giving you a license, it is about ensuring that people who have better resources than you are not able to attack the market just because you also don't have access to that resources. So from a very technical point of view, if you have read a book called The Long Tail, it's a seminal book, all of you should read it, it's called The Long Tail. There is a particular word that is used, which is very close to my heart, it says democratization. It says democratization, which means one company, one person, one industry cannot have an unfair advantage over the others just because technology is not available. And when technology is made available, it evens the ground. It just levels the playing field. That's what is democratization. So when I'm talking to you about using technology and I've understood what are your issues, I will come straight to two, three points because I think I just have four, five minutes. The first thing is, I take from what Apple said, all of you have to continue to be high tech, high touch. So just by using technology, you cannot obliviate yourself from not being able to present yourself as a financial planner or an advisor or a mutual fund distributor, whoever you are in front of the client. You've got to meet the client some way or the other. Maybe you can use Skype for a video inter I mean, interaction. So the way you look at technology cannot be that it takes you away from your core role. Technology should complement your efforts. And most often I've heard advisors telling me, when I use technology, and at least put it on his slides as well, you actually leverage an employee who is ready to work for you 24 by 7. Is there any employee who can work for you for 24 by 7? Can you yourself work 24 by 7? No, but if you have a website, it talks about you, you have a login, your clients can access their portfolio, available 24 by 7? So technology is nothing but another resource that you have that you can deploy to give your clients an access 24 by 7, which an employee cannot do. And that is therefore very important to look at because in the changing world, customers become more demanding. Customers go and fly around all, all around the world and they expect to see their money in front of their eyes. So you need technology and that is why you said I want reporting tools. So where I come from is, Understand what you actually need from technology first. Have clarity. And then you go looking in the market for providers who can support you with services and systems that can address your need. If you are not clear what you want from technology, I'm sorry, none of us can give you an answer of what technology can do for you. A simple thing from controlling my TV from my mobile is something I can do right now. I can switch on my... Uh, home TV using this mobile right now. I can view the programs of my TV on this mobile right now. I just use an application called Slingbox. But that is not technology. That's not what you need. Why, why, why would I want to show you TV? We are here to discuss financial planning, right? Or distribution. So just by talking technology, I can address your need. So two things that you should keep in mind when you discuss technology. One is, why do you need technology? Be very clear. The second thing is, if you're going with anybody, and I'm giving you decision-making tools to, to, to sign up or not use a technology provider. In technology, you have two, three ways of being charged. The first way of running a technology company, and when you go and use a technology, is by a license. For example, Microsoft Office. Okay? You will go and buy Microsoft Office. Do you pay license fee one year or every year? One, year? one time. One time. One time license fee to use Microsoft Office. Correct? 18,000? About 18, 20,000 rupees. Correct? Now, is Bill Gates bothered whether you're using PowerPoint? 
Yes or no? Jaldi? No. Even if you use PowerPoint, is Bill Gates bothered whether your clients are getting impressed with your presentation? No. Okay, even if your client is getting impressed, is Bill Gates bothered whether your client is paying you fees? No. So, what happens to technology providers who sell a license? People who sell licenses, sell the license and then they do upgrades. So you bought Microsoft XP four years back, correct? After that, when they launched Windows 8, what did they do to Microsoft XP? They will say, after three years, I will stop support. So then what do you have to do? You have to upgrade. Do you have a choice, sir? No. So you will have to go again and pay him license fees. So Microsoft Windows 8, you have to pay him additional fees, correct? So that is one model in technology. That is, you pay license fee, you pray to God that there are upgrades every year, and you also pray to God that after three, four years, they don't stop the upgrades, so that you are not forced to buy the next license. You got the first model? The second model is pay as you go. Pay as you go. Now, Microsoft has the same model. Do you all know you can use Office Online? You can use Office Online, right? So when you use Office Online, what do they do? They give you one month access, two month access. You use it. You make money, you don't make money, I'm not bothered. Right? But I'll give you. So I don't want to force you to buy a license. You pay as you go. Please write these things down because this is what is important for you when you evaluate technology. And the third model is partnerships. The third model is partnerships. Now imagine Microsoft coming and telling you, here's Windows 8, here's Microsoft 365, you use this, I will train you on this, you do client presentations, you impress your clients, your clients will pay you fees. If they pay you fees, one portion of it, please give me. You get that model? That is partnerships in software. A, a, a process where they say that the success of using my software defines the income that my company would get. So you have got these three models. Now it is your choice which of these models you want to adopt. Some people don't like the last one because they are confident that they will be highly successful every time. So why do I have to share my success with somebody? Some people are not sure about their business so they will go and use the second option. I'll take for two months, I'll take for one month. Some people, they feel that, you know, let me go the archaic way. I will just buy Microsoft, one year license, let me see how, whenever it happens, it happens. So these three ways of engaging in software or technology is how you can generally use any service provider. So what I am trying to tell you right now is nothing about iFast as a platform, nothing about any particular solution for financial planners. I have just given you three ways in which software is available for you as a consumer to consume. And if you are not aware as a consumer how you can consume technology, we are not even ready to go to the next step. So, so this is the first part. The second part is, once you are aware what you have to do to fulfill your needs, and you have zoomed in on how to choose a product provider based on this criteria, then you have to do due diligence. Is the product provider sound? Am I talking to Microsoft? Or am I talking to ABCD? Is Microsoft well capitalized? Will they be continuing in this country to give me the service? Or is this ABCD very interesting because he's trying to subsidize me and give it to me cheap? It's cheap versus, not cheap versus expensive. It's cheap versus quality, sustenance, and credibility. You've got to evaluate that. The second step then is, how safe is your data? When you evaluate softwares, you have to understand where does your database reside? Does it reside with you? 
If that's the case, you are responsible for your data. But at the same time, you also have to evaluate whether somebody can pluck that data from, the, from your laptop using your software. You've got to ask these questions. You've got to ask, even if my data is in my laptop or desktop, can you pull it because I have signed this agreement with you? Ask straight questions. And if they are able to pull data, you please ask the next question. Where is your confirmation about client confidentiality with me? How are you allowing me to rest in peace that the data of my customers, my business, my analytics is not plucked from my systems and taken to you and you will misuse it later? Where is that comfort? And the third part to this is data doesn't reside with you. Data resides in servers outside of your environment, which means you are accessing information over the web. If you are accessing information over the web, then there are two important things you should consider. One is, is the website secure? Do we know what is a secure website? It will it will have HTTP? S. Excellent. It will have what kind of encryption? Excellent. 128 bit encryption. Will it have a certificate? Excellent. By whom? It will have an SSL certificate issued by whom? VeriSign? Anybody else? SSL certificate issued by VeriSign, thought somebody of that nature who will certify that this website is secured. And if your servers are in a secure environment, chances are that hackers will have more trouble to go and access it. It's not that it is hack free. They will have more trouble to access and the company that is giving you that service will have to put in place all sorts of checks and balances to ensure that your data is safe. So we have come to the next part. You figured out what to do. You are comfortable with data. Then we come to whether the tools and the services that this organization provides is fully allowing me to leverage what I want. You will always not get the best fit. There is no ready-made solution in this world that can give you an instantaneous fit to exactly what you are looking for. Take it from me, everything will then have to be customized. So for a fact, you should have to live with this reality that when you talk of technology, you will agree that I want 100, but somewhere for a start, I will start with 70. And then let me see if I can talk to them, build 75, 80, 85, 90, so on and so forth. So technology has a lot of these nuances when you get into uh, adopting it. And last but not the least, please also understand that after you have figured out all of this, also define what will be your exit. Define your exit when you enter into a relationship because the devil is in the detail. So for example, one very simple thing that everybody in this room would be worried about when you talk about platforms and all of that is, hey, my ARN versus your ARN, right? If it isn't my ARN, my assets are mine. If it isn't somebody else's ARN, the, the assets are not mine. Yes or no? Yes or no? Ah, so let me give you some news. It's not breaking news. It's old story, four years old. When we launched in India, we actually went to Amphi and we told them that ARN is IFAS because IFAS takes the responsibility of compliance. But if the advisor doesn't like IFAS, then the assets are the advisors. So if the advisor moves out of the IFAS platform, I will give his assets back to him. He has to get trail. You understand what I'm saying? So those people who don't like me, who walk out of my platform, take their assets with them and take their trail with them. How many of you know this? You know. Anybody else? You know. Three people out of an audience of 55. And we are in the mutual fund industry, right? Amphi board has taken this decision. Same way, if you want to join another platform, we have opened that door as well. If you want to join another platform and you have assets with you and you want to migrate to that platform, still the trail will be paid. Still the trail will be paid. So I'm trying to, you know, ease out the concerns because at the end of the day, whichever be the platform that you choose, please understand that platforms are here to do what? To be of service to you or no? 
what is the business model of a platform? To serve the IFA or not to serve the IFA? To serve the IFA, right? If the platform is here to serve the IFA, then why would the platform have clauses which says, I don't like you? Your assets are mine. It's not correct, right? It's not at all correct. And the second important thing is, therefore, when you choose a platform, if it is your ARM, it is your compliance. It is your compliance. These, the service level agreements with asset management companies, the ownership of all those things that are necessary to be done as an ARN holder, including compliances with any future regulations, is your headache. If you ride on a platform, which in the morning you heard, in countries outside of India, we are very, very unique that way. India, everybody can deal with asset management companies. In, our, in countries outside India, we can't deal with asset management companies as individuals. We have to deal with companies who are licensed by the regulator, and those companies use platforms. For example, if I take Applease's example, Applease handles 320 crores as a person like you, and he works for a company called PIAS. And PIAS is regulated by MAS, which is Monetary Authority of Singapore. And PIAS as a company uses platform IFAS. So in India, this concept is only picking up. It will take a long time. So where I come from is when you take decisions around what to do and how to go about your business, please also be clear who is answerable to the regulator, who is answerable to the, to the governing body, and whose headache is the liability when it comes to doing business. Once you have this answer, then it's your decision. If you are willing to take that risk, go ahead take the risk. If you are not willing to take that risk, don't take the risk. So you have all sorts of platforms available, people who will help you to do it under your ARN, without your ARN, with no ARN, all kinds of platforms will come up. But at the end of the day, you have to answer this question yourself first, and then you go about choosing whom you want to work with. So I think that's it for me. My time is over. All the best and good wishes from our side. What Rajesh says, what I have learned from you all is that, Rajesh, that whatever software tools I have been telling is just free of cost. So I have been instructed by some of the IFAs in Gujarat that whatever you are teaching to IFAs, first caveat is you should be free of cost. So whatever tools I show, it should be, Deepak, you agree, correct? Free of cost. So <laughs> on a lighter side, I said, so I leave it. <laughs> Uh, with that note, I'll uh, put forward the uh, discussion to Sadik Nilgan. Oh, okay. Uh, Sadik, we want uh, Mr. Rajendra Bhatia uh, to please continue the discussion and take it forward from here. I'm Umesh Shukla from ICANN Financial Solutions. Basically, I'm just an IFA. I'm not technocrat or not technology savvy. So Sadik and Rajesh will enjoy me more. The thing is that okay, what I learned that if change we will not adopt it as IFA, then we will not survive into the market. The best example is Kodak. Okay, this much digitalization is happening and they have not changed themselves. So what happened to them? Ultimately, they are nowhere into the market. They are bankrupt. And even full day session, we have observed few things. Even I have recently gone through an RBI note that within five years, the check facilities are going to go away. If you will really bet on India rural story, so Indian rural story, you will check it, even rickshaw fellow, even helper, even worker, they are using mobile applications more than even uh, the metro people. Whether we understand all these things, we are talking about India growth story. Okay, our Growth story is typically on young population, their earning is excellent. And if you will check it to, in today morning session, the figure was that okay, more than 50% of the uh, Indian population, 30, average 38 persons are more aware about financial products. And the 50% of the uh, smartphone utilizers are average age is 25. So where the market lies? It's with the young people, and they are technology savvy. So if we will not change ourselves, 
the things are going to be very horrible. And how it helps us that it minimizes our effort, minimizes our cost, and minimizes our time. So other all speakers are excellent over here on technology part and all these things. But I would like to say, okay, if we will not change ourselves in this uh, recent time, then time is changing very fast and we will be nowhere into the field. So with this, because the full day session was very hectic, so So with this, I will hand it over. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shankar. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Now may I request uh, Sadiq. Uh, he has a small presentation to make. Sadiq is the uh, uh, co-founder of Network SP. Uh, is a uh, is a group of financial planners and over to you, Sadiq. And we were discussing on technology. Today, you should share what you have been, how you have been active. Um, okay. Now, he's a good friend of mine, so whatever he says, I take it. Uh, I have little, uh, very small utility called Dashlane. Now, we all know that uh, we go to a lot of websites, we register ourselves, we, you know, we, we give our user ID, password. Five days down the line, you forget the password. Again, you go back to the web, same website. Every time you go, you have to do the same thing. So our life is miserable. So there is a utility called this Dashlane. What it does is, you know, it, it stores all your user ID and password at one place. And that place is your PC. It does not store elsewhere. So what happens? Every time you log in, it picks up the user ID and password for that particular website. Okay. So you, there is no user ID, no password. It just you just go to the website and you are through it. Assuming that, assuming that for a website like let's say Facebook, my my wife is using it, I am using it, my son is using it. So when you go to Facebook, you will have three options. It says it says this is, is this your user ID? You select the user ID and just you are through. You don't you are not required to put your um, password. So this utility you could use it for um, you know. Even if, even when you are not on, um, on your, at your home, it, it could be on your mobile, you could use it with your tablet, you could, go, you know, you could go to your client's place and download this utility and uh, start using it without worrying about what would be the user ID for various um, um, website. So this is, I think, I, you should be using it and I have found it very convenient. Thanks. 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 Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you. Kya hua? Chala gaya. Okay, the PowerPoint is not working since the project is not working. No problem. I'll just try and uh, tell you whatever is there in the PowerPoint. All right. Uh, I'm basically going to be covering some seven, eight tools which I think are very useful for the uh, financial advisors. Not only financial advisors. Uh, but anybody who wants to uh, run his business or practice very uh, uh, productively, I would say, or much more efficiently and effectively. Uh, if I had the uh, screen, I would have actually showed you how these things work on uh, my laptop. Most of these tools and applications, I use it myself. Uh, uh, so basically, there are, I think, seven, eight productivity applications. Uh, those of you who want, you should actually try and make a note of them and try and use it uh, in the next two days. Usually, the tendency is that once we go back, if we do not implement things in the next two, three days or give a thought to it, we tend to forget. Okay, so make a note of it and try and implement them in the next two or three days maximum. Uh, the first application, and all these applications are uh, freemiums. Do you understand what's freemium? Okay, the basic version is always free. And then if you want a higher version or you want to uh, elongate it, use of that, you have to pay for it. But uh, I think most of the advisors should be okay with even a free version of uh, all these uh, applications. And uh, second, most of these applications are cloud-based applications. You understand what is cloud now? So basically the software and the data resides in a cloud, some other server, instead of uh, uh, it being in our laptop or in our uh, server. Uh, the first application is, uh, uh, these are all, you must have heard of them and I'm sure that uh, many advisors really do not use it, okay? So uh, uh, try and use them, that's more important. Knowing is not actually important. Using it is important. The first is uh, Google Apps. 
uh, how many of you have a corporate id or your firm's id okay that's like 15 20% and uh, by corporate i mean you know you at your company name you all have a firm name or company name right so how many of you do not have you at your company name dot com as your email id please raise your hands please this is for you okay uh, this is one of the most fundamental thing having uh, and when yesterday i tried to spoke that we are trying to compete with the big daddies banks and all as professional as you can get be there and it uh, every opportunity we have to take and build our identity our company is our identity our name is our identity okay so google app what it does is uh, before it was free uh, those of you who have got it already must have got it for free but now you have to pay some 150 200 rupees per user but what it does is very fabulous thing uh, you need to have a, a domain name registered somewhere your company domain name registered somewhere and you can create you at your company name dot com for 150 rupees a month don't you think that is good you are creating your identity think of it in this way what will your client think you at gmail I, gmail dot com or you at your company name dot com a small difference but can create a major impact in the long run so that is google apps and within google apps there are actually tens and twenties of application but there are three most important applications within that that is one is google uh, uh, gmail second is there is something called as calendar google calendar okay uh, we all fix up meetings with our clients very simple things all these things are very simple but many people really don't use it google calendar what you can do is you can actually uh, whenever you fix a uh, meeting with your client uh, you can send the reminders now one day before 24 hours before or 15 minutes before whatever it is two things happen it's not always about the features it's always about the benefits that we have to think number one the chances of meeting getting cancelled lessens many times clients say right are nahi yaar rehne do abhi kal milte hain this kind of thing will get lessened okay meeting cancellation number one second many a times client have to prepare something before you go to the meeting okay kuch information nikal ke rakhna hai documents nikal ke rakhna hai don't you think if there is a reminder going to him two hours before the chances of him preparing for the meeting are much higher and your time is saved google calendar him also me also in fact it comes on your smart app or smartphone also it can it's on the cloud you should start in fact let me share with you many doctors have started scheduling their appointments with their patients like this on the google calendar that is the second app within the google app third app within google apps uh, is google drive google drive what you can do is it's like the just like you know we have a hard drive it is a drive on the cloud so you can store your documents there share your documents from there within google drive which is a difference from dropbox which he spoke about you have something called as google docs and google forms okay google docs you can simultaneously suppose you are having um, you know your client has to fill a questionnaire for you for whatever meeting the kyc risk profiling whatever it is the client can enter it you can enter it simultaneously you so you can work on one document simultaneously with your client isn't that time saving instead of sending him a soft copy he taking a print out filling it sending courier back to you so that is google doc in google forms what you can do is uh, i have seen a couple of ifas using it uh, wherein if you are conducting uh, uh, the first thing is you can take customer feedbacks how many of you do customer feedbacks once in a year or so okay before technology that is number 1 take customer feedback so if you are doing customer feedbacks you can prepare a simple form saying okay what do you like about us what do you think should be the improvements etc etc make a small form and all these things are as easy as you know using uh, 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 microsoft word or excel okay so uh, so within google drive you have google forms and google docs which are very 
uh, effective. So Google App is the number one application I think we all should subscribe to and start using it. After Google App, uh, let me come down to... Okay, um, how many of you use Skype, virtual meeting applications? Apart from talking to your, you know, your relatives in US. With, pay, uh, with your clients, Skype, very good. Others, see many a times IFAs I think are restricted to their boundary, restricted to their geography because of the communication or the distance. The age of geography and distance has gone. You can move much beyond your geography. Many of your clients, relatives and friends are beyond Hyderabad. Why are we not tapping them using the communication technologies? like Skype, TeamViewer. Why are we not tapping the NRIs who are from the Hyderabad using the Skype and TeamViewer? Okay, so within uh, at least financial planners, I see that uh, using Skype, they do the uh, simultaneous data gathering. You know, the screen is shared. So whatever screen I am seeing, the same screen my client can see and whatever I am feeling my clients can see filling it, so virtually we are up, uh, working on one particular application by sh sharing the screen or we are trying to give the presentation of our reports and all these things. So try and use virtual meeting applications, that's number two. Third, uh, Dropbox, uh, he mentioned about it, I just want to add another, another couple of points. I think it's a revolutionary, uh, uh, it's a revolutionary technology according to me, and thanks for mentioning that in the first uh, uh, presentation. Uh, what can you do with the Dropbox? Basically, Dropbox is nothing but 